Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to Statistics for Trauma Research Part 2, The Revenge. Uh, quantifying the extent of disease, I mean. Um, the, this one, again, we're, uh, we're just doing some, some basics of, uh, uh, of trauma statistics, uh, well, of, uh, of statistics in general. Um, really wanted to get some, some basic terminology like prevalence and incidence um, and, uh, and, and talk about different ways to express um, the extent of disease and compare extent of disease between uh, different groups. Uh, so, so first off, prevalence. And, and uh, if, uh, if you're a statistician or an epidemiologist and, and, um, <clears throat> and you, you hear somebody use the words prevalence or incidence in the wrong way, it's kind of like nails on a chalkboard. <clears throat> but, um, but prevalence basically is just the, the number of people who have a condition. Um, so like the, the examples given here, one in 88 children have autism spectrum disorder. Arthritis limits the activities of nearly 21 million adults. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, just a measure of the burden of, uh, of the disease, the, the number of people who, who actually uh, are dealing with it uh, at, uh, at a point in time. Um, and um, so it's, uh, the, um, uh, the equation is simple. It's uh, just a, for, for point prevalence, that's, uh, that's the, the number of people at a, uh, at a specific point in time who have the disease uh, divided by the number of people in the population or the number of people that, that are examined uh, in, the, in the group of, uh, of interest. So, so for, for, for example, using our, our, uh, our trauma data uh, here for, for 2010 and 11, uh, looking at, at our female patients who are, who are less than age 55, um, out of a total of uh, 850 uh, women that, that we saw, 90 of them uh, were, were pregnant for, uh, for just over 10%. Um, and we can look at the, at the different prevalences by the mechanism of injury and, and see that, uh, that, that with violent injuries, um, uh, uh, over 14% of, uh, of those women uh, are pregnant uh, compared to 12% um, uh, to, uh, 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 in, uh, in the motor vehicle related. Um, and of course this varies by, by age even w within uh, the, the less than 55s or the, the, younger, uh, the younger women, especially with violent injuries, tend to, to have higher uh, prevalence of, uh, of pregnancy. Certainly this is not something that, that we could um, appropriately uh, measure using incidents uh, because that relies on new cases and if they're getting pregnant in the hospital, that's probably a complication of some sort. <clears throat> so um, when are we actually, what, why does prevalence matter? Well, in, in the case of pregnancy, certainly you wanna have some I idea of uh, how many women with that, with that sort of condition, uh, with our older adults and, uh, and their um, uh, anticoagulant medications, uh, we, we wanna have some idea of what the, the burden's gonna be. Uh, this is an example from uh, in a disaster type of a setting. Um, <clears throat> during Hurricane Katrina, where we had uh, millions of evacuees, um, had, to, had to shelter a whole lot of those people. And um, there was one shelter that had more than 6,000 people uh, and we knew that the prevalence of diabetes in, uh, in that area was about 11%. Uh, most people who had diabetes had uh, a few days worth of medication uh, with them, but, uh, but, but some didn't. And so, uh, so out of over 6,000 people, we knew there, uh, there would uh, be over 600 people uh, with diabetes. And that ended up being one of the, the big issues to deal with for, for the people responding to the shelter. Um, uh, having to, to find enough uh, glucose meters and medication uh, for, for the, the people who, um, uh, who, who needed those. Incidents, um, in contrast to prevalence, is, uh, is the actually new cases of disease. Uh, so uh, measured by, by new diagnoses uh, or, or new incidents of disease. The example here is just the estimated rate of new HIV infections uh, in 2009 nationwide. Um, and you can see how that, how that can vary uh, by, by race and ethnicity. Um, but there are two types, well, the yeah, definition is just the likelihood of developing the disease uh, among people who, are, uh, who don't have the disease uh, and are at risk of developing the disease. So, um, so the, uh, the numerator in, in both of these types of incidents, uh, these measures, uh, is the same. It's the, the number of people who develop the disease during a specific time period, usually we say per year uh, or something like that. Um, and, uh, but uh, but there, there are two different ways of measuring this. Cumulative incidence uh, is the, the first one, and that's where we're just comparing that with the number of people uh, who are in the sample or in the population. Uh, so that's uh, divided by the number of people who are at risk uh, at, uh, at that baseline time. Um, 
if we, we want more information and we're not able to, to follow those people um, for the entire time period, we'd calculate what's called an incidence rate. Uh, and that's where we incorporate the, the lengths of time that each uh, people contribute um, to the denominator. And I'll have a couple examples of this. Um, so cumulative incidents, usually we, we need to, to know um, the we need to be able to follow all of the participants for, for the full length of time. Um, <coughs> but the incidence rate uses that person time data. Um, usually we uh, express that as a, as a number uh, uh, per thousand person years or per some, uh, some unit of person years or person months as, as appropriate. Um, so to take another example from, from the trauma data, um, looking at uh, a ventilator acquired pneumonia, um, as, a, as a proportion of the, the total number of people who were who ventilated, um, the, we, we see the, uh, the cumulative incidence uh, of, uh, of VAP for the, the 0 to 49 year olds um, was, uh, was 10 uh, out, of, uh, out of 176 uh, who, who were actually ventilated, so 5.7%. Looking at the, the older patients, there were 117 on vent, seven of them developed VAP. Um, so, uh, so that uh, that incidence is seven out of 117, or or six percent. So, actually, not a whole lot of difference by age with this, <coughs> but the, but that's a, a good measure of incidence. <coughs> if we want to, uh, we know that the longer somebody's on a vent, uh, the more likely it is that they're going to develop a, a ventilator acquired pneumonia. So, it might make sense to to look at uh, the the length of time that that they're on. Event. So that's why an incidence rate uh, might be more appropriate for this. So, so in this case, instead of using the, the number of people who were ventilated, uh, what we use is the total number of vent days. Uh, so the number of days cumulative that, that, that people were, uh, were on, a, on a vent. <coughs> and again, the numerator is going to be the same. It's just the, the, the number of new cases of VAP. Uh, but now the denominator is, uh, is the total number of days uh, that people uh, were on a vent. And, uh, and so um, calculated basically the same. Uh, the, our younger ages, uh, we still have, have 10 people, but they were on for uh, 857 days. Uh, so for, uh, for an incidence rate of 11.7 per thousand person days. Notice before I mentioned person years, the, uh, the, the person time can be whatever unit is appropriate, as long as you specify what the person time is. Um, and over 50, it's uh, um, 7.6 per thousand person days. Now this doesn't give the entire picture, but it's a little more descriptive uh, than cumulative incidents. When we talk about survival analysis later on, uh, we'll get a little more into this. I, I, I took a little closer look at, at this data and, uh, uh, because, for, for example, that for the first two days, there were no cases of VAP because uh, it, it takes some time for that to develop. Uh, and that, that also uh, encompasses about um, uh, a third of the uh, of the total person days um, that uh, that people are on ventilators, uh, and uh, and about half of people are, are on for for about that length of time. Um, so uh, so that many people really are not at, at risk yet. But uh, but just kind of brings home the point that uh, that the more uh, detailed you can look at the data, the better uh, in in terms of understanding it. Um. There is a relationship between incidence and prevalence. I use the analogy of the bathtub. Uh, they, and there's a, a, a fairly uh, simple equation where uh, we think of pre prevalence uh, being a function of the incidence and the, the duration of the disease. So, uh, so the number of people with the disease uh, is a function of how, uh, how frequently people uh, uh, contract the disease and how long they have it. Um, so uh, like with the bathtub, incidence would be the faucet, the water coming out of the faucet, and duration is just how long the water is actually in the, uh, in the bathtub and, and how wide the, the drain is open, um, letting people come out. Um, so as incidence goes up, of course, prevalence is going to increase. As the death rate goes up, that means duration is getting shorter, and so prevalence is going to go down. Um, we can uh, calculate <coughs> a good estimate of the number of people that we actually have hospitalized. Um, based on the number of admissions per day, you get about 7.3 uh, people admitted uh, to trauma per day. Uh, and the, the mean length of stay is about 3.8 days. Uh, so on a typical day, we have about 28 people um, actually in the hospital. Um, 
the, in, uh, at, in some stage of, uh, of care. So that would be the, uh, the prevalence. Okay. Um, now, that's all well and good, but uh, often we, we need to, to compare two different groups uh, with each other. Then there are uh, essentially two ways to do that. We can subtract or we can divide. Uh, when we subtract, that's called the, the risk difference, uh, and there's a couple different names for that. We can think of it as the excess risk or attributable risk. Um, and, uh, or we can, uh, we can actually look at, at relative risks or odds ratio if we want to see proportionally how much higher uh, is one group than, uh, than the other. <coughs> now to talk about the risk difference, also known as the attributable risk or ex excess risk, um, the concept is that, uh, that people who, who don't have the exposure that we're concerned about have a certain baseline risk of disease. Um, with any disease, even like lung cancer, people who have never smoked a cigarette in their lives has, have a certain risk of getting lung cancer, baseline risk. Uh, the example here is for coronary heart disease, <coughs> where non-smokers have a baseline risk of 17.4 per thousand. Um, and uh, and in, uh, in smokers, though, uh, the risk is 28 per thousand. So, uh, and, and we, can, uh, uh, we can separate that uh, into th that baseline risk that is the same as the non-smokers that they would have had whether or not they smoked uh, and the additional risk or the risk difference. Um, and so if uh, out of that 28, 17.4 is going to be due to that background or baseline risk and they, the additional 10.6 um, per, per thousand is, uh, uh, is due to uh, smoking. And um, <coughs> The, the other way of thinking about attributable risk or the risk difference is that proportion of disease that can be attributed to that, uh, uh, to that risk factor uh, or that uh, the amount that can be done away with if, uh, if that exposure was eliminated. Um, so the, uh, the equation is, is just the, the incidence rate uh, in the exposed population uh, minus the incidence rate in the uh, not exposed. And um, <clears throat> the example we have here uh, actually comes from, uh, uh, from, from San Diego County Switters data. Switters is the statewide integrated traffic record system. Uh, this is car crash data. And um, so in, uh, uh, in looking at, uh, at the, the proportion of people who died uh, as a, a, and, and whether or not they used a seatbelt. Um, so in 2009, um, the, those who actually used a seatbelt um, we had over 13,000 people in injury crashes. Uh, 72 of them uh, died in, in that collision uh, for, a, uh, uh, for a death rate of 0.54% uh, uh, in that group. Um, those who did not wear a seatbelt, we'll think of them as the exposed group because they're exposed to the more dangerous situation. Um, there were 475 of them, 38 died uh, for, a, for a death rate of 8.7%. Uh, so the attributable risk there is, uh, is that 8.7 minus the 0 0.54 uh, that, that we saw in, the, in those that, that were actually using safety restraints uh, for a, an attributable risk of 8.16% uh, uh, attributed to not wearing a seatbelt. Um, there's another, fun the, another uh, measure called the attributable fraction where you can say the percentage of those who, um, who died uh, that was due uh, in the exposed group that was due to the exposure. And so that's where we just take the attributable risk and divide that by the, the total risk in the, uh, uh, in the exposed group. Uh, so uh, in this case, that's that, uh, that attributable risk that, that we calculated, 8.16%, divided by uh, the 8.7%, which is the, um, uh, the risk of, uh, of death among those who didn't wear a seatbelt. Um, and we get uh, almost 94%, meaning that 94% uh, that of, of, uh, of those deaths in people who were not wearing seatbelts um, could have been avoided if they had just worn a seatbelt. <coughs> now, from a public health perspective, um, often we want to know, okay, how does this affect things on a population scale? Because if, uh, if the exposure is something that's, uh, that's not particularly common, um, it might not really affect a whole lot of people. Um, but, if, uh, but what we want to know is how many, uh, how many deaths in the whole population uh, could we prevent by getting rid of this exposure 
Um, that's called the population attributable risk or population attributable risk uh, percent. Um, and, uh, and that is calculated exactly the same as uh, the attributable risk uh, that, uh, that we used looking at the exposed population, except now instead of uh, using the, uh, the exposed population incidence rate, we use the total population. So the incidence rate for the overall population uh, and subtract off the, the incidence rate for, uh, for the unexposed group. Uh, so that's the proportion of disease or injury in the whole population that could be reduced uh, by getting rid of that risk factor. Um, and going back to the example of, of seat belts, well, uh, now uh, what we're interested in is, um, is the, the total uh, amount of, uh, of death uh, the, the total number of uh, uh, crashes um, where seatbelt use is known. And um, we find that, that now, uh, of course, that's, uh, that's going to be the, the sum of, uh, of all of these um, where seatbelt use was, was or was not worn. Um, and we've got nearly 14,000 uh, crashes, 110 uh, deaths out of that. Uh, so the population attributable risk is going to be that 0.8%. Uh, minus the 0.5% the that we saw in those that, that actually were wearing a seatbelt. Um, so uh, not quite as impressive as, uh, as those where, uh, that weren't wearing seatbelts, but still 0.26% uh, 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 of those uh, were, due to, uh, were, not, uh, were due to not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, and to, to get the population attributable risk percent, uh, we just take that divided by um, their, uh, uh, the, the population's um, risk of death in a car crash uh, and find that uh, that nearly one-third of all deaths um, from a, a motor vehicle crash could have been prevented if everybody had been wearing a seatbelt. Um, so still pretty powerful measure. Okay, so that was attributable risk. Um, so the, again, the, the amount of, uh, of, uh, of disease or injury or, or death that is due to an exposure. Relative risk uh, is where we're saying a, a, a certain exposure doubles your risk or, or has uh, uh, some proportionate increase uh, in, uh, in risk of disease or death. Um, so uh, examples here, cannabis can double a driver's risk of a serious crash. Uh, divorced men are more than eight times more likely to commit suicide than divorced women. Um, and uh, dense breast can nearly double the risk of breast cancer recurrence. Um, and, uh, and that's what we're getting at with, with relative risk. It's uh, simply the, the incidence rate uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the exposed group divided by the incidence in the unexposed, just the, the ratio of those two incidence rates. Um, and uh, and uh, if, uh, if you, you like visuals, um, we can think of, uh, of this as, uh, as just being incidence of disease and exposed is uh, is uh, where uh, where we divide this uh, two by two table into uh, cells A, B, C, and D, where A is uh, exposed with disease, um, and A plus B is the total number of exposed. Uh, incidence of disease is in exposed is A over A plus B, uh, not exposed C over C plus D. So the relative risk is just a ratio of those two um, incidences. <clears throat> okay, so going back to our example of, uh, of VAP, um, and, uh, and the, uh, the stratifying by age wasn't particularly exciting, so I, I looked at, uh, at whether or not they were intubated uh, when they were admitted. Um, and, uh, and, and now we see that, uh, that those that, that, uh, that were intubated in recess had a, a risk of, uh, of developing VAP of 7.8%, uh, of, uh, uh, five out of the 64 that, were, uh, that actually were intubated uh, in the recess room. Uh, compared to 12 out of uh, 229 that were, were not, 5.2%, the ratio of those two risks is 1.49. Uh, so we can interpret that as saying the risk of VAP is 49% higher in, uh, in those that were intubated uh, on admission. Obviously, there's uh, much more to it than the simple act of uh, intubation. They're probably much more severely injured uh, and other factors going on. All right, odds ratio is related to relative risk, um, but it's, uh, it's somewhat different. It's uh, uh, something we calculate when we, uh, usually when we can't calculate a relative risk. Uh, and the, um, 
uh, conditions for that uh, are usually when, when we're conducting a case control study. And I'll talk a little bit about why you can't uh, calculate a, a relative risk in a case control study in a minute. But, uh, but first we need to understand the difference between probability and odds. Uh, probability is just a proportion. It's a, the proportion of the total events uh, that result in an outcome. So if we flip a coin 100 times, you get 60 heads. Uh, and the probability uh, of getting a head uh, on, the, uh, on a coin flip, uh, we can calculate as 60 divided by 100 or uh, 60%. Um, odds, on the other hand, is the ratio of the number of successes to the number of failures. So the number of times something does happen uh, to the number of times that it doesn't happen. And so, um, so using the, the same analogy, 100 coin flips, 60 heads, the odds of getting a head uh, is, uh, is the ratio 60 to 40 um, or 1.5 to 1, um, or, or simplifying down to, to just 1.5. Um, and using our, our, uh, our example of, uh, of, uh, of VAP again, probability of, uh, of VAP uh, for those who were intubated on admission is, uh, is five out of the 64 who were, uh, who were, uh, who were intubated. Uh, but the odds of developing VAP uh, is, uh, is uh, five divided by 59. <coughs> and uh, and you know, essentially the, the odds ratio uh, is just the ratio of the odds uh, in the in the exposed to to the odds in the not exposed, um, and uh, and this is technically uh, uh, what the uh, what the equation is the incidence in exposed divided by one minus the incidence in, ex uh, in the exposed uh, for the, for the odds in exposed. Likewise for the unexposed. Um, and if you want to use that that same two by two table to uh, uh, to to calculate uh, an odds ratio. Um, technically, it's the, the proportion of, uh, of, of, the ex uh, of exposed who get the disease divided by the proportion of uh, the exposed who do not have the disease. Uh, however, uh, since the, uh, the denominator in both of those is, uh, is the total number of exposed, uh, that, uh, that cancels out. So that simplifies just to A divided by B. Uh, uh, similarly, with, uh, with the not exposed, um, the, uh, the, the total number of not exposed is in the denominator of both of these. That cancels out, so that simplifies to C over D. Um, usually the equation that people use for, uh, for calculating, calculating an odds ratio is called the cross product. It's, uh, so it ends up being A times D uh, divided by B times C uh, in, in this type of a, a table. <coughs> All right. So, um, so, so looking at uh, relative risk versus uh, the odds ratio, uh, when we have full data, um, uh, when we have all of the data, we may as well calculate the relative risk. And in this case, that's, um, um, uh, again, uh, the, that 7.8% divided by 5.2% um, the risk of, uh, of VAP, uh, depending on whether or not they were intubated in recess. Um, and so we, we get a relative risk of 1.49. Odds ratio uh, again is uh, is the odds so five over fifty nine uh, divided by the twelve over two hundred seventeen, uh, and you can see that it's pretty close, but uh, but it's it's a little bit different. Um, the reason we would calculate ratio is if we're doing a case control study, um, and uh, and so uh, in this example, let's say we've still got the same number of people uh, with VAMP, uh, so those are, those are all of our cases. Uh, but now we decide we want to, to match them two to one. Um, so we want to get two controls for each case. Um, so, so we draw 34 uh, uh, controls uh, who did not develop uh, ventilator-acquired pneumonia um, and find out whether they were intubated in, in the recess. Um, if we were to, to calculate a relative risk on this, uh, we would need to, to be able to, um, to calculate the, uh, the incidence rate for each of these groups. Because we, uh, we uh, basically manipulated uh, the numbers here to, uh, to, uh, so, so that um, we intentionally drew only two controls for each case, uh, we have, uh, have artificially inflated uh, the, uh, the, the proportion of people who have the outcome 
Uh, and so in this case, uh, it appears that 33% of, uh, of our sample uh, actually has, uh, has VAP, which of course is not the case in the, uh, in the real world. Um, and so, so, uh, and so, likewise, uh, the the rates within each of these exposure groups is also going to be elevated. Uh, so we really can't use that now to to calculate a relative risk. So case control study, uh, we can't do that. But what we can do, if uh, if uh, each of the the cases and controls is representative uh, of all cases and controls. Uh, we, uh, we can uh, measure their risk of uh, the probability that somebody who has the disease had the exposure. So we can measure it the other way um, and, uh, and calculate that probability. Um, so in this case, uh, yeah, 29% of, uh, of those with, uh, with VAP ended up uh, being <coughs> intubated in recess and 24% of those who, who did not develop VAP uh, were, were intubated in recess. <clears throat> the uh, the reason we can actually use an odds ratio, so what we're interested in is not the probability of having the exposure given uh, given disease. What we're interested in is the probability of developing disease given exposure. Reason we can uh, uh, that that we use uh, we can use the odds ratio as a uh, as an estimate of the relative risk is because the uh, the result ends up being the same no matter how you calculate it. So if you, if you do the, uh, the five divided by uh, 12 uh, divided by eight divided by 26, um, we get 1.35 for that. If you calculate it the other way, so five over eight, the odds of, uh, of having, uh, having VAP given intubation um, uh, divided by 12 div uh, over 26, the odds of having VAP given not intubated uh, you also get uh, 1.35 in this example. Uh, so it's calculated exactly the same way. You get the same exact answer uh, either way that, that you calculate it. That's why the odds ratio uh, is a reasonable uh, estimate of the relative risk in a case control study. Um, so, so, and, and you, uh, technically you can calculate an, an odds ratio in any type of study. Uh, but, uh, but with like a clinical trial or a, a cohort study uh, or something that's population based, usually relative risk is easier for people to understand. And so that's why we, uh, we calculate relative risk uh, on those. So just to uh, recap that, it's not possible to estimate a relative risk in case control studies. So uh, we use the odds ratio because it's calculated the same way because of that, that invariance property. Okay, so just to recap what we've talked about, um, prevalence is, uh, is people who are living with disease. It's a measure of the burden of, of disease uh, and, uh, and the demand on the healthcare system. Uh, incidence is new cases of disease. So we can uh, calculate incidence to, uh, to talk about, um, uh, to, to be able to, to measure risk factors for developing disease. Um, and, uh, and, the, and there are two types of incidents that we talked about. Cumulative incidents uh, is the number of new cases divided by the population or the total sample. Um, so, the, uh, so the denominator there is just the number of people. Incidence rate, the denominator, is the total amount of person time that's at risk. Uh, and, uh, and prevalence is a function of, uh, of incidence and the, and the time uh, that, that people have the disease. So uh, prevalence is incidence times duration. Um, attributable risk is the incidence that is due to, or, or sometimes people use prevalence, that is due to uh, a particular risk factor or the amount that, that could be eliminated if that risk factor uh, was gone. Uh, relative risk is a, a ratio of the, the incidence in exposed to incidence in, in, in the not exposed. Uh, unfortunately, we can't calculate that in case control studies because we uh, have, uh, have artificially inflated the proportion of, uh, of cases uh, of people who have the disease. Um, and, uh, and so, but we can use odds ratio in case control studies. So that's the ratio of exposure uh, in, in of the odds of exposure in cases to the odds of exposure in controls. So, so we do use that in case control studies. All right. Um, and next time, we will meet back here on October 2nd, uh, we've, uh, we're going to go a little bit deeper uh, into 
uh, the magic of statistics, and talk about uh, about probability uh, and a few specific bi a few specific distributions, uh, specifically the binomial uh, and normal distribution, and talk a little bit about the central limit theorem.